Hello and welcome to another live episode of the Leveraging AI podcast. I am so excited to have you today. We're here with a very important topic and with an amazing guest. And so I will start with why is this an important topic? So the first thing we need as a business is clients. Like without clients, you don't have a business. You, you can have a nice hobby. It could be fun and you can do a lot of interesting things, but you cannot <laughs> make money. To make money, you actually need clients who are going to pay you to have clients. You need to find your target audience. You need to find the relevant people. You need to have a conversation with them. And the more effective you are in doing that, regardless of what your industry and how big your company is, the more money you're going to make. And that's why it's a very critical topic because literally the livelihood of your business depends on this as the very first thing. Like you can run a company without legal, you can run a company without marketing, you can run a company without finance, you can do it. It's not great, but you can do it. You cannot run a company without clients. And our guest today, Jeremy, is an absolute ninja when it comes to figuring out how to find the relevant people, specifically on LinkedIn, and I'm sure on other platforms, but we're going to focus today on LinkedIn, how to use AI to automate the process of finding the right target audience and finding the relevant people and having meaningful conversations with them so you can turn them into clients. Now, if that's not important to you, you probably, again, don't agree with what I said before, which would be surprising. And so I'm really excited about the topic. I'm really excited about our guest. Jeremy, welcome to Leveraging AI. Thank you very much. I'm very excited to be here with you. I'm not in Hawaii, but I'm in Paris, which is quite cool too. <laughs> not bad, not bad. Getting ready for the Olympics? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We are afraid of the mess, but yeah, that would be fun. I'm sure it's going to be, it's going to be hectic, <laughs> but it's going to be probably fun, fun, hectic. Uh, sure. I've never been to the Olympics. Uh, so first of all, for all of you who are joining us, whether you're with us on Zoom or on LinkedIn, I'm really happy to see all of you. As a first thing, wherever you are, please let us know where you're joining us from in the world that will be very cool because we have now two people one in hawaii and one in and one in paris so it'll be interesting to see where everybody else is but then jeremy let's really get started with a very high level question and then we'll dive into this i know you're doing this for yourself as well as for multiple businesses how did you figure it out like how long like ai started like showing up about a year ago a year and a half if you were really early into the game and then now you're already, again, like an online ninja teaching people how to do this. How did you figure it all out? <laughs> I failed a lot, like a lot. That's, <laughs> that's okay. the secret. That's the secret. Yeah. Actually, I, I own an agency right now. So yeah, as you said, I'm, I'm doing this for me and for my clients. And I would be more than happy to develop on what we do. But in the last five years, I was a salesperson myself. In the last three years, I was a, the head of sales at a software company. And actually, I started this entire sales department from scratch in this software company. And uh, yeah, I had to find a way to get clients. Like you just said, it's quite crucial for a business. So I tried almost everything and failed a lot. That's not a joke. And based on that, I've learned and I've seen some things that works better than others. And in last, at the end of 2020, 2022, ChatGPT came. Get out! It's I, I, it's a revolution in in my face, like uh, everybody else, and I thought that it might be something interesting to implement in my sales processes. So again, I, I tried a lot of things, and this is how I I've learned, and and at the same time I've started to share what I've learned on on LinkedIn, and here we are doing this. Okay. Sounds amazing. I'll ask a quick follow up question, or you know what? I won't ask a question. I will state something that is very important. That's the way to learn, right? So a lot of people are afraid yeah. getting started with AI. Well, what if it's not going to work? What am I going to do? What? I, like the only way you're yeah. going to figure this out, even if you follow people like Jeremy, you follow people like me, you follow other people, the only way you're going to actually learn is getting your hands dirty and trying stuff out. And it's not going to work the first time or the second or the third. But on the 20th time, you're going to yeah. create magic, which is going to save you hours and weeks and going to throw your business into an upward efficiency curve that you've never seen before. So it's worth the effort. So Jeremy, let's really get started in into your process. And I will let you just walk us through step-by-step step on what do you do? How do you do it? Which tool you use? So the stage is yours. I'll just ask hopefully good questions. 
Okay, sounds great. Uh, yeah, by the way, I totally agree. Uh, you have to try. And what we do here, what we are doing here, like showing you stuff, will just make it happen more quickly. You will succeed more quickly because you will have some information, but you will still have to fail yourself. So, so yeah, totally agree with you. So yeah, let's put some context here. How to get clients? Big question. Um, let's start with what you shouldn't do. I love to say it. You shouldn't use the spray and pray approach. It worked like, I don't know, six or seven years ago when nobody was sending e uh, emails. When you received uh, an email at this time, you were like, oh, interesting. A generic wall text. Oh, interesting. Now, yeah, when somebody you receive... wants me an email. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's not like someone I know. Wow, amazing. Now, today, you receive another generic email. You're like, oh, come on. And you just delete it at best, or you put it in spam. So it doesn't work anymore. So what you need to do is to be absolutely relevant, straight to the point. And if you can, you personalize your approach. And to do that, you it requires actually a lot of time. You have to do your research. You have to, if I want to reach out to you, I need to know what you are doing, where you are based, what's, what your business is doing, what's your offer, what kind of problem you're you're solving for your clients, what kind of problem you're facing, etc., etc. A lot of information. And also, I'm adding to this huge amount of information that I need to find on you. I'm adding some intent signals because not only you need to be relevant, personalized, but you, you also need to be here at the right, in the right timing, in the, at the right moment. Because let's say, I'm, let's say if I'm selling some talent, talent acquisition services, and I reach out to you and you don't hire, you don't have to hire anybody at the moment. You will just say, hey, interesting, but not right now. And you waste your time, basically. So it's not wasted because you have a contact. That's positive. But you won't have a deal from the teammate, for example. So we had more information, intent signal. So that's a lot of things that you need to find. And if you do it manually, it requires an entire team of, I don't know, 10 person doing this, which is which basically not the best activity to do as a professional. I've done that. I know like looking on <laughs> searching on LinkedIn or Google all day long. It's a bit, it's a lot. It's, it's a bit too much at the end of the day. You are like, okay, let's have a drink uh, of wine, of course, in Paris. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so the good news is that today, so first, the first level of things was automation tool. So that came five or six years ago, automation came to us, helping us doing more work without investing more effort. And the next step, which is today, was AI. And AI can not only automate things, but you can add some intelligence in your processes. And this is very interesting because let's say if I want to, I'm taking the, the example I was giving you just before. If I want to reach out to someone who is hiring right now, I need to search on LinkedIn. Is there any open position for this company, for example, or another job board for, to see if there is a work position? The good news is that, is that AI agents can do that for us now. So you can have high quality information at scale without uh, hiring dozens of salesperson. So that's- Yeah, I, that add, I wanna add one small yeah. thing to what you said as far as the intelligence and old school automation versus automation with AI. And the way I like to describe it when I teach my courses is there are two, there's old school automation, right? Zapier, make, NA10, pick your poison, right? There's a lot of- Absolutely. Ways to do that. And when you do old automation, then it, it, it helps you build processes if it's a tedious process that is the same every time, meaning it does not really require any human input. I want to search through this list, find anybody who has four stars or more, save their name, copy this, put it in an Excel table. Yes, it will work. You can do this every time, all day long. It was possible, yeah. again, six, seven years ago. Every time you want to add a human input, meaning I want to filter this by some kind of a thinking process. I want to send them a message. I want to create a new text. I want to yeah. respond to something. I want to do anything that is not a simple what if based on the existing data, which means it requires some human input. AI knows how to do very well. Meaning if you're not asking it to rewrite your uh, strategy, then that would yeah. be probably too much input you're asking for it. But if it's yeah. small human inputs that are required, 
then AI does a perfect job of complementing the old school automation stuff. Absolutely. I totally agree. And what's in interesting in the tools that we have today is that you can split the process in many small tasks. And by doing this, uh, you will only ask one very simple question to the AI, which will reduce the risk of the AI just hallucinating or doing the, the wrong thing. If you do your prompt quite well, I'm not a prompt engineer expert, but I'm okay. I understand how to use prompt engineering. So the result would be quite consistent every time. So that's also very interesting and very important. So okay. I have prepared a small use case. So everything that I've described, it applies to cold outreach, for example, cold emailing. That's, and it's still, just to say it, it still works. <laughs> you can see a lot of people on LinkedIn say cold emailing doesn't work anymore. I think they, 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 don't, they just don't do it right. They, they suck at it. That's why they, say, they are saying this. If you do it right and you, if you use AI to, to do your research, it will work. That said, there is another level of things that you can do, and this will involve um, LinkedIn and content, as you mentioned earlier, which is warm outreach, which, which is even better. And which is the reason I'm, I've called my agency outbound, which is outbound, like cold, but also outbound warm and inbound, because we are creating content on LinkedIn to generate this awareness, to generate this authority, this credibility, and also so inbound leads, that's one thing, but also when you reach out to someone that have engaged with you in some way, it's warm leads at, at this at this time, at this moment. So we will emphasize on this today. So you can I can show you something that I've prepared to for you. Okay. And let's let's set the problem that I have. Let's say I have created content. That's first step. I've had quite success quite a successful post like a hundred likes and comments. That's pretty good. Cool. Probably because I'm talking about something that is relevant to my audience. Probably it's in this people like in this people liking my, my, my post, some of them would be interested in my offer, but I, I can't, I don't want to manually go through 100 people liking the thing, open their profile, look at if they are matching my ICP, because remember I said, you have to be you have to target these people. You can't spray and pray. We want to be relevant. So if I'm offering talent acquisition services, I will target maybe people who are hiring and I don't want to do the research manually. So they are one, but they are maybe not my target. So the use case that I've prepared is using AI and automation to just scrape a list, like the Android likes, put this in, the tool will do the filtering for me, meaning it will go step by step, verify all my criteria and say, okay, this person is matching your ICP. You can now reach out to him or to her. And I will just show you this. So let me okay. show you my screen. Let's do that. Okay. So you should be able to see my LinkedIn post of today where I'm actually describing this exact process. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. By the so way, the for those of you who are listening to the podcast and not watching oh, this, yeah. uh, A, come join us. We do this almost every Thursday at noon Eastern time. So you're welcome to join us either on LinkedIn or uh, on the Zoom with all the really cool people. Uh, I'm, I'm not taking anything away from those who are joining us on, on LinkedIn. I appreciate every one of you. But uh, if you want, all of you, if you want to be able to chat in the chat and see what's happening, uh, come join us on the Zoom calls as well. And if you are driving your car right now and it's not Thursday and you can't join us, then we're going to describe everything that's on the screen so you'll be able to understand what we're talking about. So, Absolutely. sorry, let's continue. <laughs> yeah, no problem, of course. I have created this four-step process and I will describe every one of them. So the first one is data scraping. As I mentioned, we want to extract this profile, this pro the person that are liking this post because I don't want to be stuck inside uh, LinkedIn and do it manually. So I need to extract this into uh, an Excel file, for example, most of the time it will be a CSV file. And this file will be, I will be able to import it in the next tool. Note that you can automate this. You can, for example, create a Zap with a Zapier to use, I don't know, Phantom Buster is one of the data scraping tool and you can directly push it into a, a clay table that, that can be done on autopilot. In that case, it's, a, it's an example, so I, I've done it manually. 
So for the data scraping, I've listed four tools. Some are advanced, some are free. So that's for you to have the choice to so it matches your needs. So Phantom Buster is one, Person AI is one, Epify is another. And this, there is this little Chrome extension by Folk, which does it for free. It doesn't work all the time, but it's, it's free. So it's pretty good to start. Uh, Second step. Quick question. Yep. For, because I'm sure you've tried all of them. Which yep. one works best for this use case of just scraping data from LinkedIn consistently in an effective way? I would pick uh, Phantom Buster. Yeah, me too. Okay, we're on the same page. <laughs> yeah. By the way, for those of you who don't know Phantom Buster, it's an amazing automation tool with really advanced capabilities. Only disadvantage is cost. I assume, it, I it's know it's, it's more expensive than all the other ones, but if you want to do stuff at scale and yeah. with very detailed processes, there's nothing that competes with it. Yeah, absolutely. And, it, and it, uh, as I mentioned, it offers like API keys to put it into automation and push, push all of the process and the workflow automatically. So yeah, it's more advanced, it's more expensive, but it's also better. People are asking for the Chrome extension. Can you say the name again? For the people who are listening to us, you can go yeah. in the Chrome store on Google and search for the Folk, F-O-L-K, which is a okay. CRM and they have developed this additional extension that allow you to extract leads from from LinkedIn directly. And let me show you if it works. Oh, yeah, okay. Ugh. It doesn't matter, it's okay. Just people wanted the specific name. Yeah, yeah, so you will have this here. Okay, this thing. Falk. And if you Perfect. click on this, you will be able to scrape. Okay, so okay. next step, now you have your list of uh, people who have liked or commented your, your posts. So they might be interested in you. This is, this is a signal. Next, you want to filter them to make sure they are matching your ICP because you don't want to reach out to anybody. So to do that, we will today use Clay, which I think is one of the most advanced tool. Uh, same thing is, is a bit, it's a bit expensive, but it's also the best. So if you want to do it at scale, at scale, I recommend using this one. Persona is doing quite well. Relevance has a cheaper offer at $20 per month, which will only allow you to do this also. It's not exactly the same way, but it's, it has it provides the same results. So I wanted to offer you different possibilities here. Yeah, and then and after, for those after, of you for those yeah. of you who do not know, Clay is also a good scraper, just not for the LinkedIn use case. Like you can scrape data yeah. with Clay very effectively. On LinkedIn, it's just not working that great. Yeah, exactly. You can scrape stuff from the web, which works yeah. quite well, but from LinkedIn, it's it's not that it's not that good. Yeah, absolutely. And then after. The clay filtering, we will use, you can use your favorite outreach automation tool. I'm using Lemlist. I will show you how it looks. Reply is quite good too. And there are others, of course. And my personal touch is the is record, which is uh, my CRM. And this allows to continue the conversation because the whole goal of this strategy is to start conversations, but you don't want to, at least for now, I don't want ChatGPT to answer and make the conversation entirely. I just want to start conversation at scale, and then I'm, I'm driving them and uh, I'm continuing the, the conversation from Breakhold, which allows me to manage the CRM part of things too. Yeah. Okay. Any awesome. question? Or I'll show Let's you. Let's dive in. Let's see step clay. by step. Okay. So I've prepared this, and we will try with your profile, uh, Isa, if you want. So for those who don't know Clay, it looks like this. It's like a table, like an Excel table, but inside. Uh, the website inside your browser and you can add rows and you can add columns and in the columns so basically the first column here will be the trigger there will be the starting point of everything that comes after on the right so my source is the linkedin profile as this is exactly what i will scrape from the people who are liking the the post and so this is basically the linkedin profile url from the people who liked. Let's let's do all the columns one by one. So the first thing that I need is to extract the name of the person, full name, name and and and, and the last name, first name and last name. So there is there are different columns that you can uh, do with with Clay. Some are, are built inside the tool. Some, for example, this one, and it will extract some information based with their own technology and some others you will, so for example, this one, you will just connect an external tool to your workflow. 
So this one, enrich person. So basically what it does, it's based on the URL. It will extract from LinkedIn directly the name and the first name and the last name. So that's my very first thing, my very first step. The second step is I have created this file that I've named. So it's for those who can't see, it's a Google sheet that I've named already script because I don't want, and I think I made a mistake here. There is only one P, right? No, what? We don't. Oh, maybe I won't do this because it will, it will, it will. Yeah. No, I think it's fine. Okay. It will trigger so, the thing to run again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's keep this mistake. No problem. So what, why I've created this is because the way it works, when you pay for, you're paying for clay, you will have credits, credits that you can spend to do tasks and using AI and to use AI. So to save some credits. You can use some steps that are free. And for example, Google connection to Google Sheet, it's free. So you can look up to a, a file, you can add rows, and I think you can also delete rows. So the first thing that is, I have put these two columns. The first one is look up to this file and tell me if this name, full name, is already in, in the file. The reason is that if it is, that means that I've already scraped this person. This person liked at least two posts that I have wanted to, to use for my warm outreach. So I won't you put this person in the entire process again. So I, won't, I will just ignore everyone that, that have all been already scraped. And if it's not in the file, then I will add it. So next time, it will be recognized as, okay. Do not continue the process for this person. We already do, we have already done this. Then I'm doing the same thing with another file, which I named the blacklist. And that can be inside this, this file. That can be like my clients. I don't want to reach out to my clients. That would be weird. That can be my own team. That can be my friends that I know that are not interested, etc. You can note also, if you want to do it more professionally than this example, you can connect actually your CRM. So I think there are connectors already existing with the most common CRMs like HubSpot, Salesforce, et cetera. If your CRM is not, doesn't have a connector, you can use the APIs. Most of the tools, modern tools open, offers API and you can just build it. It requires a bit more skills, but as we said earlier, you will fail at the five time and the six will be the, the good one. So you can replace these files with your CRM, which would be, could be more streamlined. Okay. So next step based on that, but yeah, I want to show you something here. So in this column, for example, this step will only happen if it match this weird formula. So obviously I didn't write this myself. I used AI here. And what you can do is describe the condition that you want to do. So in my case here, I want, I want this column to run only if the lookup is not empty and false. And the, font, the blacklist is false too, which means that you will run, I'm telling to the tool, you will run this column only if this person has not been scraped before and is not in the blacklist. So this is also one way to save credits. So again, to explain to people what we're doing from the beginning. We started with scraping people's profiles based on some criteria on LinkedIn using Phantom Buster. This populates the first column of a table. And then all the following columns, the first two columns were filters. Don't do this, go through this file, go through this file. And then the next column is saying, okay, don't continue to the next column, which is how this tool works, before yeah. you check if the other two columns are the, the lookups through these lists are false. Exactly. And this again is done A, to save time and B, to save a lot of money. Absolutely. It, it can be expensive if you don't optimize your workflows. Yeah. So yeah, it's important to do it since the beginning. So you save money. Exactly. Okay. Let's just a quick warning. We have about 10 minutes, so we need to move a little faster. Okay. Let's do it faster. Then. So the next step, if it's much, so it's not already scraped and not in the blacklist, I will start enriching and ask questions. So the questions will be done by the AI. And if the, the answer is the one that I want, then it continues. If not, it stops. And at this moment, uh, so give, uh, at give, this stage, give me an example for a question. 
Yeah. So the first one is I want to filter people based on their location. Let's say, mm. so in this example, I will show you the prompt. So quick note, you can, when you use AI in Clay, you can select the model that you want to use. So in, in this case, I used GPT-40, which costs credits. You can select 3.5 Turbo, for example, or, or Cloud, or their own model. The price changed, but I would recommend for very simple tasks, you can use 3.5 Turbo. For more advanced, for always better because you don't want yep. the, the tool to say, I don't know. So yeah, the prompt here is you are a geography expert. I will provide locations and you will reply with true or false only. You will try, you will reply true if the provided location is in North America, Europe, blah, 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 etc. So I'm adding this that I'm, that I, I want to target this location and nothing else. And here is the location. And here you can see the location is actually a variable which is my previous colon based on the enrichment that I've done on the LinkedIn, with the LinkedIn profile. So this location yep. comes from LinkedIn. And if it's match my question that the tool will, with ChatGPT will do, will, will answer, then it continue. And then I've done that with multiple criteria because, okay, I want to target this locations only. So if it's in France, for example, I've excluded France because I don't want to work in France with this offer. So yeah. I'm excluding France. So if someone comes from France, it won't, it will stop at this step. At its, uh, yes, at this step. Yeah. Then it will continue and it will make a summary of uh, the profile and their current activity. And their current activity next is the next filter that I'm adding. I want to know if their activities, their company is B2B. So same thing here. I have used this time, not ChatGPT directly, but a clay agent, which can visit a website. In that case, the LinkedIn uh, company page. And based on the information that there is on this page, you can ask a question. In that case, I said, read and analyze the about section. And based, of, based on what you learned from it, tell me if this is B2B or B2C. So if it's B2C, I will stop the process here because I don't want yep. to work with companies that are working in, in, B2, in B2C because my offer is for B2B companies. Same, I have added this one, so I hope it works because I've added this just one hour before. Same, here I want to know if they are working in an industry which is not the same as mine because I don't want to send an offer to a competitor or a partner. Yep. I, want, I, I don't want them to be in the... Uh, lead generation or automation uh, industry. So exclude this and tell me if not. So in, this ca in that case, for example, Brigitta is working as an agency like mine. So it's false. Cool. It stops yeah. here. Then I will do the same on the employee uh, headcount because I know that my targets are SMBs. So if it's like 10,000, it will be too much. And uh, yeah, also I want to talk only to the C-level of the companies. I don't want to talk to anybody else because I need to target the decision makers. So yeah, same thing. Based on the information, step by step, I will say, okay, this time you are an HR expert based on your on the title. You will tell me if there is a, this is a C-level or not. And the final step is adding a row in a filtered, another file, which, and I will show you with your profile, as I will do a test with your profile. So. This is a, the live part of the demo. So of course it won't work. I, I'm just, <laughs> just a, a disclaimer. That's why we do live. That's why we do live. Yeah. So things happen. <laughs> <laughs> so let's try it. So let me sh just confirm that you are not. Yeah, you are here. I've tried it before. Okay. So you are not in the list and it's saved. So it should work. Just a quick note also you can. So for example, this one here. No, not this one. Sorry. This one, I think. Yeah. Nope. So again. Okay, we'll do it. You will see. Okay, let's try it. So you can see here it's running. So it's yeah. So it adds. So again, for those of you, those of you listening, all that he did is in, in this case manually grab my LinkedIn profile, put it on the very first column, which starts the process. And then Absolutely. it's like a waterfall, right? With all these gates that he has defined. And what we see is that it's getting filled up with information as we go to the right. Exactly. So it has extract your name, 
Right. So it's so far it's good. So far it's good. It, it says <laughs> your, your name. But yeah, I wanted to show you this. Here you can you can define if it's run, it will run automatically or not. So I have stopped it okay. just for so I have the time yeah. to explain what's happening. But you can yeah. put this on full autopilot. Yeah. Let's do it. So it should not find you. So the next step for those who listen is the lookup in the file in the Google Sheet. So it's moving to the next step. So it has added your um, LinkedIn profile into the file. It has looked in the blacklist. You weren't in the blacklist, so it continues. Now it's looking for your location. So you're based in the US and it was in my criteria. So it says true and it continues. Then it looks at your professional activity, your company, what's your company doing and is it B2B or B2C? It says it's B2B, so it continues. Then the industry. So this one is new, so we will see. Okay, so it's good. You are not working in the sales lead generation uh, industry, sure. so it continues. Then it counts the employee, the ad counts. So it's less than 100, which is my limit, so it continues. Then it looks at your title. You are the CEO of the company. So it continues and it says it's true. And the final step is that it's added to my file, which is filtered actually. So as you can see, you have been added here. So next time if I'm doing, I mean, if I do the exact same process, it won't work yeah. and I, it will save me credits. And in this one, you have been added here. I have done this fancy formula to add a timestamp. So as you can yeah. see today in France, it's 641. And yeah, you have been added at this moment. So what I do after this, so I will show you with 10 lines so you can see it working uh, at scale. I will just push a list, wait for my AI automation to work for me, do or something else, come back to this file and just engage and just save this person in this file and push this file into my lame list sequence. I save the time of looking of looking out on all this per, this person manually finding the right information. That's so, amazing. Okay, so I want to do a quick summary and then I'll let you tell people how they can find you and follow you and so on. <laughs> the most time consuming part of all of this, after you've done the initial strategy, like <clears throat> you need to know who's your target audience, what's your ICP, like you need to figure that out. That's for a whole different episode. But uh, once you figure yeah. that out, you can use a tool like Phantom Buster or others to just find these people and download them. But that's not good enough because then you're going to invest a lot of time and money in going through a lot of people who are not really your ICP. And what this tool, what this process within Clay that Jeremy just showed us allows you to do all the stuff that you would have done manually or hire people to do at a very large scale. And yes, paying money for credits, but this would be adding 100 lines like this will cost what, roughly? Uh, so the first, yeah, no, the first plan comes at one forty nine uh, dollars per month, and you have two thousand credits. So each yeah. steps will cost you between one to three credits. So it's way way cheaper than hiring an employee <laughs> to do the yeah, same thing. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely, and way faster, right? Because we just saw in real time this did the whole research about me in about thirty seconds, and mm -hmm. so. 30 seconds to run through somebody's profile, collect all the information, and decide whether you want to move forward or not is very little amount of time. Jeremy, this was phenomenal. If people are not using something like this, again, they're missing out. Like this process is nothing short of magic. And the biggest benefit going back to why we want to use AI is that it saves you a lot of effort and getting to better outcomes. So you gain both on the quality of the outcome as well as the efficiency of the process, which means in both cases, you win as a business. If people yeah. want to learn more, if they want to work with you, learn from you, find you, connect with you, what are the best ways to do that? LinkedIn definitely is the best way to do it. You can send me a connection request. You can send me a DM. And you can look at my website, tc9.ai also. Awesome. Jeremy, thank you so much. This was really valuable and I'm sure people will get a lot from it. Thanks anybody, everybody from joining. I see people literally from all over the place, both from Europe and from everywhere in the US that have joined us. And so I appreciate everybody who has joined us both on LinkedIn and on the Zoom call. And I wish everybody an amazing day. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>